It's such a great joy to be together again as we sit around the Word of God and study. Nothing gives more joy and more pleasure as the Word of God. I'm going to enter today into part two of the message that was started with a title, Pentecost or Babel. Pentecost or Babel. And for those of you that are joining us, we are coming to this message based on what we read in Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9, and Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Pentecost or Babel, let us pray. Open our eyes, O God, to behold wondrous things from your word. Let the preacher disappear that only Jesus may appear. Let your glory be revealed, Lord, I pray. Let your blessing come down beyond measure. I ask in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. It was John Knox who prayed a prayer that rings across the centuries since he prayed it. He prayed and said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. Lord, give me Scotland or I die. For this great man of God, it was either winning Scotland for God or death. And he pressed on under the inspiration and unction of the Holy Ghost and won that great country of Scotland for Jesus with great revival. I stand here today to say categorically that without Pentecost, death is operating in our lives. Without Pentecost, death is operating in our churches. Without Pentecost, death is operating in our homes. Without Pentecost, death is operating in our relationships. Our congregations are dying when they have semblance of life. Whatever we do in our services, without Pentecost is death given, not life given. For the letter kill it is the spirit that give it life. Second Corinthians 3, 6. I declare, give me Pentecost or give me death. We have come to a point in the journey and the history of salvation we have come to a point in this end time that is Pentecost or nothing. I say Pentecost or nothing. Pentecost is what we need. It is not more money. Pentecost is what we need. It's not more crowds. Pentecost is what we need. It's not popularity. Pentecost is what we need. It's not more degrees. Pentecost is not what we need. It's what we need. It's not more positions and promotion. Pentecost is what we need. The opposite of Pentecost is Babel. And the opposite of Babel is Pentecost. If you are with me in part one of this message, You'll remember that Babel means the gate of gods or the gods. It is man designing its own gate into the realms of heaven. It was a place of confusion. But Pentecost, on the other hand, Pentecost just comes from the Greek word 50th. The reason is Pentecost day is the 50th day after the Passover feast in the Jewish calendar. And it was on Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, as we read that the Holy Ghost came down according to the promise of Jesus in torrential capacity. 
Unfortunately, both Babel and Pentecost dwell side by side in the church. And it's sometimes difficult to distinguish whether it's Babel that is going on or it is Pentecost that we are experiencing. Everyone is singing, everyone is teaching, everyone is preaching. Some are serving and deaconing, if I could use that language. And every activity going on in similar ways, but with different effects. See, there are similarities between the event at Babel and the event at Pentecost. So you can get confused. And many people are satisfied with Babel because it looks so much in some ways. Like what happened in Pentecost, for instance. At Babel, people all came to one place to build a tower in order to reach the heavens. At Pentecost, the Bible says, on the day of Pentecost, when he came, Acts chapter 2, verse 1, they came together in one place. There is a coming together in one place. Whether it is Babel or Pentecost. And their purpose was to reach God. At Babel, they all spoke one language and God caused them to speak many languages. And at Pentecost, they all spoke one language, Aramaic for these Jewish believers, with a Galilean, which is a, a Galilean diet, but, but the dialect. But God caused them to speak many languages, you see? from one language to many. At Babel, God came down to the people. And at Pentecost, the Holy Ghost descended upon the people. Similarities. At both Babel and Pentecost, people were scattered. However, for very different purposes. Because at Babel, the people scattered in hostility and chaos. But at Pentecost, they scattered uh, with a new love and purpose boiling in their hearts. They scattered and went to spread the good news of the risen Savior. They scattered in Babel out of shame, but scattered at Pentecost out of service. The Babylonians were scattered out of judgment, but after Pentecost, the believers returned to their homes. It was to, to share the love and mercy of God that they returned. They were scattered to serve. In the years that followed, even when persecution rose against the church, the believers scattered all over the place and took the message of Jesus around the world. Instead of populating the world like Genesis 11, Pentecost was about evangel evangelizing the world. So you could see things that look alike in Babel and Pentecost. That's why I say you can be in church and you are operating on Babel economy, Babel style, and Babel spirit. But I'm here to say, we must reject Babel and all its confusion. For God has given us the privileges and the power that comes from Pentecost. Pentecost is a reversal of Babel. Did you get that? Pentecost is a reversal of Babel. How do I know that? Babel was an example of man's will. Pentecost, an example of God's will. The message of Babel was that God is nowhere, but the message of Pentecost was that God is now here. Babel is a symbol of rebellion. Pentecost is a symbol of unity. Babel, at their Babel, people wanted to make a name for themselves. At Pentecost, people wanted to glorify God. After Babel, the people could no longer work together. At Pentecost, they started working together. At Babel, God drove people apart to thwart the evil. But at Pentecost, he brought people together to inaugurate righteousness. The Tower of Babel remained uh, as a symbol of our rebellion against God. But Pentecost united people who were seeking God as the Holy Ghost came to possess them. At Babel, they talked about a God up there, 
<laughs> but Pentecost said, God, he's in me through the Holy Ghost that dwells in me. After the Tower of Babel, people could no longer work together to create a kingdom for themselves. That's why at Pentecost, people began to work together to establish the kingdom of God on earth. While Babel was an imposition of human will, Pentecost was the acceptance of God's divine will. Babel was bad news, but Pentecost is good news. After Babel, people spread around in hostility and alienation. Every person for themselves. But at Pentecost, they spread uh, throughout the inhabited world to serve God and spread the good news, to live in love, to live in fellowship. I say Pentecost is Babel reversed and undone. Hallelujah. We need Pentecost. Give me Pentecost should be the clear and call of every era of God's word today. Babel was God's judgment on the people who are trying to unite against God. While Pentecost is God's blessing in bringing people together, people from every race, every nation, every language to live under one God. I want you to know that Pentecost insists that there has to be diversity in the church unity in diversity in the church did you get that pentecost ensures that the people of god from all shapes and sizes will come together under one roof Diversity becomes a fundamental identity of God's church as the message must go to every people and every tongue and every language and every tribe across the whole earth. The very essence of Pentecost is to ensure multicultural reality in the church of God. Get that into your heart. No room for you to discriminate. No room. Pentecost is the end of racism. Pentecost is the end of police brutality and racial discrimination in justice. Oh, Pentecost must be the end of discrimination and sectionalism and nepotism and favoritism and prejudice ah, and chauvinism and xenophobia intolerance, bigotry, and tribalism. Pentecost is what we need. If the church ever needed Pentecost, we sure do need Pentecost now. Because I wish I could tell you that there is enough love in the church. Pentecost is what we need. Pentecost! Is what God is crying out for. The message of Babel was that we are God's little g, little God. That's why they call it the gates of God, Confucian. But the message of the people of Pentecost is that we belong to God. We are God's. There's a difference there. When what Pentecost is saying is that God is not far away. We don't need to build a tower to get to him. The Bible says, don't say in your heart, who will ascend to God? Or to bring Christ down? Who will descend into the deep to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does the word say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth, in your heart, the word of faith that we are proclaiming. That's Romans 10, 6 to 9. Pentecost brings God to your heart. The power of God begins to operate in you. Pentecost brings Jesus as a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 8, 24. Pentecost does that for us. God is not far away. No, Jesus is close. As close as the mention of his name. I'm here to declare Pentecost or nothing in Babel. 
God confused their language. But in Pentecost, God clarifies our language. No more back and front in debate and fighting. That's for Babel. When Pentecost rules in our gatherings, we understand each other. It takes the Holy Ghost. That's why we need him. We need him. If we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. In Babel, God scatters man. But in Pentecost, he gathers them under his name. Babel divided people through languages, but Pentecost unites them through the words that are spoken in various languages. Babel is what brings confusion. Pentecost is all about peace. Peace. Everywhere there is confusion, there is Babel. Confusion. Worship war, Babel. God cries out for peace. And Pentecost is what brings that. In Babel, human beings were full of themselves. But Pentecost, human beings were full of God, filled with God. Instead of being controlled by selfish motives and desires, a Pentecost man and a Pentecost woman, a Pentecost boy and a Pentecost girl becomes fully alive, full of God, full of God's passion, full of God's desires, transformed into God's priorities. You know, at Pentecost, the division of Babel turned to unity. And the independence of Babel became interdependence at Pentecost. The human ingenuity of Babel becomes buried in a new kind of ingenuity, not led by humanity, but led by God Almighty. I cry out a day in the name of the Lord. Don't let nobody trick you back into Babel. Don't let nobody entice you back into Babel. Don't let nobody invite you back into Babel. Don't take a job that will keep you in Babel. Break relationships that imprison you in Babel. You don't need that promotion. If it will bring you back to Babel, stop dressing like you're still in Babel. Dress like you have experienced Pentecost. No more going back. No more. No, the Lord told me that Babel is a spirit and Pentecost is also a spirit. Of course, we better let you know the spirit of Babel is an evil spirit parading itself like the Holy Spirit. Well, the spirit of Pentecost is the Holy Spirit. Do you see amen out there? See, the spirit of Babel in you is what makes church leaders to sue one another in worldly courts and make the police to arrest one another because they can't agree. Shame on us. Spirit of Babel. That's when it's in you. It makes you to sit tight in an elected position in your local church or your district or your conference or your union or your division or even the general conference. You sit tight. See, Satan has helped you to define yourself by a temporary position. Now you are willing and ready to cheat and lie, manipulate and politic and kidnap and malign, assassinate people's character, even kill to maintain that position or to move up in church hierarchy. Shame on you. I call you Babelites. Babelites. You are holding the church of God hostage. Or even plotting to avoid free and fair and timely church election. You're gaining the world, but you have lost your soul. 
Repent of every spirit of Babel today in the name of Jesus. The spirit of Babel is the spirit of gossip. <laughs> you know how gossip is, is disguised as prayer request. Well, let me tell you, it's still gossip. It's still wrong. It's still destructive. It's still hurtful. It's still sinful. The one who is gossiping with you right now will soon gossip about you. Or someone say, oh, it's not gossip. It's prayer request. Ah. In fact, I had someone say, it's not gossip. It's networking. You are networking yourself to hell. Rick Warren said, listening to gossip is like accepting stolen property and it makes you as guilty of the crime of theft. Rick Warren said that. Well said. So when you listen to gossip, you have become an accomplice to theft. So I want to beg you, remember me in your prayers like you do remember me in your gossip. <laughs> but let me warn you though, you cannot sow gossip and reap glory. I said you cannot sow gossip and reap glory. Gossip has become the devil's radio and he has employed you as his DJ. I had someone say great minds discuss ideas. Average mind discuss events. Small minds discuss people. Which kind of mind is yours? The psalmist in 101 verse 5 says, whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look, a arrogant hat, I will not endure. God is speaking. Even in Ephesians 4.29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. That's Babel. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. The spirit of Babel in the church is the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of revenge, and the spirit of unforgiveness. No, you are hell-bent on getting even. You may get even but you will miss heaven. I said you may get he even, but you will miss heaven. You, you, you want everything to be settled, every score to be settled here on earth. No, God has not promised you that. When Jesus comes, you will be vindicated. So stop being vindictive now. It may not deny you. God in his mercy, may let the truth come out on this side of heaven. But he didn't promise it would always be the, 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 the case. Are you willing to accept the will of God even when you are not justified in people's eyes yet? All things are lawful, but not all things edify. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Let's be willing so go through this stuff because your st starry crown will come when Jesus comes. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I want to let you know that the spirit of Babel is the spirit of creeping compromise that has entered the church of God. The word of God remains true. Separate yourself from the world. For those of you with one leg in church and one leg in the club, come out of Babylon. Come out and embrace Pentecost in its fullness. Shame on you if you are missing the blessings of Pentecost. And you're always in church. You're always doing religious stuff. You identify yourself as a whatever generation, Christian, fourth, fifth generation Adventist. What happens with Pentecost? They were bestowed with the Holy Spirit and the power of God. That's what I need. At Pentecost, there was a covenant renewal. At Pentecost, God launched a worldwide evangelism for Jesus 
he inaugurated it at Pentecost. And from then on, the word of God was on their lips. When I read what happened in the very first Pentecost in the Old Testament, Exodus 19. Now the children of Israel have had the Passover. 50 days afterwards, now they have gotten to Sinai. Listen to one of the things that God said. He inaugurated in Exodus 19.6 a kingdom of priests. Did you get that? He called them a kingdom of priests. Revelation 5.10 agrees with that. He talks about the redeemed of God as being a kingdom of priests to God. So one of your benefits is that you enter into priesthood. You enter into a covenant. Because that's what Jesus did at the Mount of Sinai with the children of God. You enter into a covenant of life and power. Are you with me today? Pentecost is what we need. I said Pentecost is what we need. I said Pentecost is what we need. That's when power came upon their life. Their character began to be developed at Pentecost. Not just power, but character. So Pentecost makes me pray. Lord, make me, mold me, fill me, fix me, renew me, adjust me, panel beat me, correct me, chisel me. Pentecost allows the fruit of the Holy Spirit to manifest. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Love and joy, peace and long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are character. Pentecost character. Are you with me? Pentecost character. How do you get that? You got to prepare. I love the way the servant of the Lord, Ellen G. White, put it in Acts of the Apostles, page 37. The disciples prayed with intense earnestness for a fitness to meet men in their daily intercourse to speak words that will lead sinners to Christ, putting away all differences, putting away all what? Differences, all desires for supremacy. They came close together in Christian fellowship. She continues in Testimonies for the Church, volume 8, page 20. Notice that it was after the disciples had come into perfect unity when they were no longer striving for their highest place that the Spirit was poured upon them. They were of one accord. All differences had been put away. And the testimony born of them after the Spirit had been given is the same. In Acts 4, 32, he says, the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. I beg of you, I beg of you, hold everything lightly as much as lies within you. Live at peace with all men. Everything will pass away. Nothing is as important. That will make us exchange Receiving Pentecost in our individual life, there was repentance. There was humility. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 says, repent. Some of you may need to be rebaptized. Amen, somebody. Oh, Pentecost is what we need. Let's press on to Pentecost. I said, let's press on to Pentecost until we have Pentecost. Eyes, God will not be seen. Until we have Pentecost ears, God will not be heard. Until we have Pentecost tongues, God will not be named. Until we have Pentecost hearts, God will not be loved. Until we have Pentecost minds, God will not be known. Oh, Pentecost hearts, we pray for. Touch with what touched God. Pentecost hands that will support the weary rather than publish their mistakes, mistakes of struggling saints. Pentecost ears is what we need that will hear come over to Macedonia 
and help us. Acts 16, 9. We need Pentecost mouths. Mouths speaking the wonderful works of God. We need Pentecost eyes that will see a believer in every person. That will see a brother in every person, a sister in every person, even when they belong to a different race or you can't understand a, even a word they say. But they're your brother. Pentecost eyes. That she's not a non-Adventist, but a pre-Adventist. Pentecost arms that will bear the burden and yoke of the gospel. Pentecost stomach that will stomach nonsense with bowels of compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and meekness and patience and mercies. Colossians 3.12. We need Pentecost generosity. It was 1 John 3.17. He says, Whosoever has the world's goods and sees his brother have need, but he shut up his bowels of compassion from him. How does the love of God dwell in him? We need Pentecost simplicity. Simplicity, not the lasciviousness of Babel. We need Pentecost passion that pushed the believers to the ends of the then known world. We need Pentecost compassion. Jesus in Matthew 9, 36. The Bible says he saw the crowd and he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep with no shepherd. We need Pentecost preaching in season and out of season. Second Peter 4, 2. We need Pentecost diet that insists, according to Romans 14, 17, that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. We need Pentecost peace that endeavors to live at peace with all people. Say seek peace and pursue peace. Seek peace and pursue peace. Not only Psalms 34, 14 says it. First Peter 3, 11 insists. Seek peace, pursue peace. Pentecost peace. We need Pentecost love that will love your enemies, and even those who despitefully use you. The Bible tells me love, faith, and hope. The greatest of them all is love. I'm talking of agape love, which 1 Corinthians 13 reminds us that is more important than your knowledge of prophetic charts. Agape love, more important than the multiple languages, more important than your surrender to persecution. We need Pentecost identity that will not be confused with the world. We need Pentecost courage that will speak truth to power instead of parleying and dialing with the devil. Pentecost prophetic voice. Pentecost boldness that persecution cannot stop. We need Pentecost anointing. Pentecost holiness. Until your shadow will heal the sick and anchor will work miracles. Like we read of Paul and the people of God in Acts 5 and Acts 19. We need Pentecost focus. We are no longer moved by mundane things. He said, she said, oh, she don't like me. Our families don't talk. That's not what we need. You need Pentecost razor focus on Jesus the author and finish of our faith. We need Pentecost prayers. Bible tells me in Acts 6, 4, they gave themselves continually to prayer and the study of the word. We need Pentecost diligence in the study of the word. Like the Berean Christian in Acts 17, 11. They received the word of God with readiness. <laughs> and they sat the scriptures daily. See if those things are so. We need Pentecost unity. That was the precursor to the upper room experience. We need Pentecost patience, persistence in prayer. Like Jesus said in Luke 24, 49, tarry until you are endued with power from on high. The promise of God is this. The latter rain will far surpass the former rain. <laughs> the latter rain will far surpass the first rain. The former rain. 
That's the promise of the Lord. It will be more glorious. It will be more glorious. I said it will be more glorious. It will be more abundant. Ellen G. White in Testimonies for the Church, volume 8, verse page 20, 21, insist. It will be more glorious and more abundant. We had a time expecting the outpouring of God's Pentecost again. But unless the former rain has fallen, the latter rain will bring no seed to perfection. Testimonies to ministers and gospel workers, page 506. So you need the first experience of coming to Jesus and be born again. You need a personal Pentecost. You need a family Pentecost. We need a church Pentecost. We need a corporate Pentecost. We need a relationship Pentecost. We need a congregational Pentecost. I'm here to let you know that the Holy Ghost has come down. You don't need to remain under the tutelage and prison of Satan. It's some 200 years ago that a guy named Judge Wilson, who had been sentenced to die by hanging because he killed a guard during a robbery, but President Andrew Jackson of America, feeling merciful, pardoned him for that terrible crime. But to everybody's surprise, Judge Wilson refused the pardon. This was so confusing to the court system because they've never seen anything like that. And they had asked the Supreme Court to make a ruling on it. And then Chief Justice Marshall delivered his, his verdict. He said, a pardon is a parchment whose only value must be determined by the one who receives it. It has no value apart from the value the recipient gives to it. Judge Wilson had refused to accept the pardon. We cannot imagine why he would do so, but he has. So, Judge Wilson must die, and die a day by hanging. The pardon has been given. Jesus has died to free you from Babel and establish you firmly in Pentecost power. What are you still doing in Babel? Come out of Babylon. It is falling. It is falling. You have no future in Babel behavior. Quit being Babel believer. God has pardoned you. He has pardoned me for those moments of behaving like Pharisees. Hot today, cool tomorrow. Jesus is about to spew such out. He says, come out from amongst them and be separate. Holy Spirit, faithful guy, baptize us anew, I pray, with power from on high. With love, oh, refresh us, dear Savior, draw near. We humbly beseech you, Lord Jesus, we pray, with love and your spirit, baptize us today. Oh, heavenly dove, let your Pentecostal power come down. Hover over me, Holy Spirit. Bat my trembling heart and brow. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh, come and fill me now. Fill me now. Let me experience Pentecost or death. Pentecost or nothing. Fill me now. Fill me now. You can feel me. Raise your spirit. I won't tell you how. I'm full of weakness, but I bow. Fill me with your love, cleanse and comfort, bless and save. Bath me, oh, back my heart, oh God. Come, Holy Spirit, sweet spirit, sweet heavenly dove. Stay right here with us. Fill us with your love. Pentecost is what we need. Pentecost. Oh, for that flame of living fire which shone so bright in saints of old. Pentecost is what we need. Oh, the spirit that was in Abraham and sealed him die, that was in Paul's heart and made his sorrow melt and glow with energy divine. Pentecost is what we need. The spirit of God is what we desire. Oh, God, renew your work. Give us Pentecost. Give us Pentecost or give us death. 
Pentecost or nothing breathe on me, oh breath of God. Fill me with life on you. That I may love what you love. Pentecost. Let him come. Let the Holy Spirit enlighten what is dark in me. Strengthen what is weak in me. Mend what is broken in me. Heal what is sick in me. Straighten what is crooked in me. Revive what is dying in me. Holy Spirit, come. Pentecost is what we need. Oh yes, convicting, anointing, regenerating, empowering, sanctifying, illuminating. Pentecost, Pentecost. Fulfill your promise, oh God. Pentecost, let the Spirit come like water and wash us clean. Let him come as oil and roll our prejudices and differences away. Let him come as wind and blow our weaknesses away. Come as a dove, spread your wings of peace. Come as light, reveal our emptiness. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Let your church on earth become blessed as the church above. Pentecost! Is that your prayer? Let bow with me. Holy Spirit, give us Pentecost. Give us Pentecost experience. The former rain and the latter rain. We don't want church as usual, but church the way you intend it to be. So change me, Lord, that I may change others. Change others that they may change me. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen and amen.